So, what is going on, man? Uh, hey, man. How you doing? Good, man. I was sipping some Ethiopian coffee, but I ran out, so now I got some Gerald Steiner. Oh, uh, dude. Do you, have you tried Four Sigmatic? Yeah. Oh, I love Four Sigmatic. Yeah. Dude, I've only tried it once, and uh, yeah, I love it, too. Um, I, I need to order a new pack. I need to like get a big thing. I I ordered it off Amazon and they only sent me, I thought I got like a big, yeah, I know. I thought I got the big package, but they only sent me like a small box and I was like, this is all I got. And I Um, haven't ordered since, but I, I, which one, which one you used? Uh, I forget, man, dude, it was months ago. There's lion's mane. Yeah. Chaga. Chaga. Um, That's the one I got. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Reishi might be a cheap man. Ta- Chaga is the bet, dude. The research on Chaga like will blow your mind. Tell tell the listeners who don't know what Four Sigmatic. So is. so Four Sigmatic is this. Uh, it's a coffee company. I think they're out of uh, Iceland or Norway. Yeah. One of the oh, two. Yeah, one of the two. Yeah, they're. Uh, I forget because they reached out to one of my uh, friends who runs Anabolic Men a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and they do this coffee. It is like microground coffee with uh mushrooms in it so you're either getting chaga you're getting lion's mane you're getting some type chaga is like super anti-cancer it's only found above the first uh like whatever cloud level is and uh these thing these mushrooms are like massive like Mm -hmm. bigger than people yeah and so you go and like take one and you have like chaga for like ever yeah and so like of course um but like the altitude they grow at and the way they work and the way uh, mushrooms work compared yeah. to humans in the brain yeah. and there's so many good benefits i i love chaga yeah, yeah man yeah i need a i need to make a big order that's that's gonna be my new thing because i drink i drink a lot of coffee i'm not gonna lie oh me too uh, yeah i love it i love it man uh, all the, the research is always like four cups a day and more those people live forever so it's like <laughs> very weird yeah i mean and yeah. then you're like i want to cut out coffee for a while and you yeah. do I mean, I don't get it. I don't have uh, whatever that addiction gene is. Uh, yeah. I don't feel that. So like I can just cold turkey anything and I don't have re- withdrawals or whatever. Yeah. It's really weird, but I'm just like impartial to whatever I'm doing, I guess. Um, but I'm addicted to coffee mentally. <laughs> so am I. It's, I actually did cut out coffee, man, last week. I'm not even really? kidding. I did cut it out. Yeah. Cause I'm doing i I'm doing a bit of an elimination diet to see if I can cure my allergies naturally. Nice. And uh, cause I've been doing a lot of research into it and I'm just sick and tired of having these freaking allergies this time of year. Um, so yeah. And so far so good, man. Like I'm hundred percent good. And uh, I cut out coffee for a week too, just cause that was a protocol. And I was like, you know what? I should cycle it anyway. Cause I literally yeah. do stuff all the time. Um, and I want to up my tolerance a little bit. So, or lower my tolerance a little bit. Yeah. Lower so, you. Yeah. Yeah. So, Cut it out for a week. Um, I mean, yeah, no, I, I didn't have like any withdrawals or anything like yeah. that either. To be honest, I was fine. Like I was just drinking water and like tea. Um, yeah. And to be honest, I was fine. Like I just, and so I know I totally agree with you. It's the, it's the smell. It's the feeling like that's, that's what I like. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's um, I did a video about this, the routine of coffee and like Seth Godin. I actually was just talking about this with Carter, but Seth Godin roasts his own beans. Yeah. Grinds them. Like, yeah. It, doesn't it's a drink process. It. He doesn't drink. He doesn't it. drink it. No, no. way. He gives he it to doesn't... a friend. He has a uh, a good conversation over it. That's that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, because I make an Amer- americano every morning. So yeah. I so I put like the grind of beans in. I put it in like my press, and I I really like take my time. I'm meti- I'm meticulous with it. So I like yeah. make sure it's all ground and it looks good. And I and I do the arrow press, and then I add a little bit more water. It's like a it's like step by step process, yeah. and I need it. It's like. Yeah. I need to do that process, not the coffee. I need to do the process. In exactly. The morning. And, yeah. Uh, and then I start yeah. my day. hundred <laughs> percent. I worked at a coffee, uh, this crazy hipster coffee shop for a while. Oh, did you? Yeah. And it was, it's one of those that like, okay, so there's levels of hipsters. Yeah. Whatever the top level is, that's where I was. And I'm like, <laughs> no I'm this frat kid. So like yeah. somehow like I get a job cause I'm sociable and uh i start at like the beginning of this like it's amazing coffee company like don't get me wrong their coffee's amazing but like um my boss was a bar- uh, traveling uh, barista or used to be uh, who would compete so like everything was like okay 
22 grams of coffee, 365 grams of water, like boom, 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 boom. Yeah. If you get it wrong, throw that cup out, make the customer a new one. Yeah. Uh, like the pour over method, like I had to learn everything. So like awesome. now my ritual every morning, like I'm way looser with it. Cause I'm not like, I don't have anybody like getting mad at me if I get it wrong. It's just the coffee I'm drinking. Yeah. So true. But, um, so true. I'm still pretty like, yeah, that pour over, man. It gets That's me. Awesome. It's the rhythm. It is. No, it's so true. Every time Ash and I go out for coffee, like I love, like, I don't just want to order it. I want to watch the barista make it. And like, I love all those like $10,000 machines that they have to make it. I'm like, Oh, I wish I had, that's my goal, by the way. I want to grow Schiller fitness to the point where I'm able to afford like these, these huge coffee machines. And I just want a coffee bar in my basement or something like that. I'll um, I'll send you a link after this, but I have my favorite one. It makes Chemexes for you. It's only like four ninety nine. Oh, and nice! It is I'm in. Beautiful, it right now. It is beautiful. Oh, that's awesome! I love it. it. Hand pour over. You don't even have to do anything. But regardless, I'm it's nice to be on the podcast. Um, be doing this. Uh, I wanted to get a little into your story at the beginning. You know how yeah, you man. started. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know how coffee fits into that. How life fits into <laughs> that. But yeah, all of it, you know. Yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah, that's a great question, man. I'll, uh, I guess start back in university, I guess then, cause, um, growing up, man, like where this all stemmed from and kind of my mindset and my philosophy behind health and fitness and, and just ultimately helping clients and, uh, and people in my community, like on mm-hmm. Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that, just helping them bridge the gap between where they are now and where they want to go is is very much a journey that I was on and obviously still am but um but yeah it's definitely something that that I learned going into university and uh in high school man I mean I was like skinny I I wasn't I played a lot of sports but I wasn't a great athlete um I was pretty average to be honest uh pretty average grades um pretty average dude if I'm being honest like my one kind of skill was and this is what my mom always told me too <laughs> was connecting with people was my personal skills it was Dude, that's the like, best though so. was making yeah making people feel something that was like that was kind of my claim to fame that's the only thing i was good at so go like graduating uh high school and then going to university i uh i really wanted to build confidence that, that was one of the biggest things man like i, I wanted to I wanted to go to class feeling good. I wanted to walk down the halls like feeling good, feeling confident in myself and who I was and and kind of reflecting. I, I don't think I, I had that in high school, mm-hmm. in elementary school, wherever it was. I don't think I really had that self-confidence in myself. I was always looking for something greater. I was always looking to be a part of a sports team or be a part of a club or be around this this circle of friends because that was the identity of that was the identity of me. So yeah. Started weightlifting my first year of university and saw the newbie gains. So came right mm-hmm. away and um and confidence just skyrocketed, man. Confidence skyrocketed. And I really started to realize the the mind body connection. Totally. Like what you do to the body has a direct effect to the mind and vice versa. Yeah. I, mean, I, ju- I mean, I just posted a video about this on my Instagram. If you haven't checked <laughs> that out yet, go to Schiller.fitness. Um, oh. Shameless plug. But yeah, man, that was, that was one of the biggest things. And that's when it all started. So instantly I fell in love with it my first year of university. And ever since then, man, like I just went all in. I went all mm-hmm. in. So I was in university for five years because it was a five-year program with co-op and stuff like that uh, where you work for four months. And yeah, yeah. Um, and honestly, man, I was, I was training, I was becoming a personal trainer, certified nutritionist, diving into like personal development too. Like honestly, sometimes on my co-ops, cause when you're a student, uh, they yeah. only have so much work for you. Right. And, uh, and sometimes there's a little bit of downtime here and there. And I remember I would be, I'd get all my work done as well as I could mm-hmm. and try to make like an hour or so time at the end of the day so I could just dive into fitness. I could dive into anatomy, biology, psychology, neurology, like all this stuff. Like it just absolutely fascinated me. And, uh, and then I got certified as a personal trainer and a uh, nutrition coach and um, became a varsity trainer. So I trained the athletes. Oh, that's at awesome. University. Yeah, man. And, and that's when it all started. So I, I would train the, the athletes at university in the kind of athlete gym so it was, it was a high profile thing which i was super stoked for and i got the 
I got the trainer hoodie and the trainer yeah. shirt. And I was like, yeah, man, this is what I want. Well, anyway, well, so I was training like the football players and, um, and uh, volleyball players and hockey players. Sometimes it depended on the day, but, and dude, I loved it. I loved it. And especially training athletes too, even though I don't do that anymore um, because they have such a will to improve. Yeah. They have such a will to succeed. They have such a will to push that limit and get to the next level. And that was, I love seeing that and I loved helping them, them grow and improve and get to where they want to go. So that, that really sparked my love for coaching. Um, but with that being said, I went to school for something totally different. I actually went for <laughs> environmental business. Really? Uh, yeah, man. Environmental so business. That was what was the, what was the mindset behind going for environmental business? Just um at the time yeah man i've I've always been passionate about the environment i still am today and uh at the time it was uh it was an opportunity that university of waterloo offered and it was one of the only schools in north america that offered it and um i I applied and it i got in only 100 people get in and um i was pretty stoked on it and it's something that's very unique it was something that was uh at the time i'm sure there's a lot of other stuff going on now but it was something that was very unique at the time and i was stoked to get in so Totally. Yeah, environmental business is my degree. Man. I mean, so like, uh, I was listening to Alan Watts last night, actually. And yeah. He was talking about how a lot of people think the organism is different than the environment. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the truth is, like, we are part of the environment because we live in the environment. I think, I, I think with you going for that, it sounds, and then coming from the networking, like, it only makes sense to come into coaching. Cause you're still helping the environment. You're helping people make more sustainable choices. Mm-hmm. Once they're conscious in those choices, it's helping everybody. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. That's awesome. Dude, that's so true. And that's something, that's something I've thought about recently, actually. So it's funny you say that cause uh, not many people would make that connection. So good job. It's a good host right there. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, man, it, it is funny because like taking care of the environment, taking care of your body is the same thing. It, it dude it really is i mean conscious intention towards things yes shapes 100%. everything you do 100%. but if you just like walk around like the whole thing is the person who bumps into people or bumps into things mm-hmm. the, the clumsy person is likely clumsy with everything mm-hmm. clumsy with their thoughts they're clumsy with this and it's just because they're not putting attention on something yet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but once you do that then you have that channeled energy yeah no, absolutely, man. I couldn't agree yeah. more. It's it's so true. It's fascinating. Anyway, man. So um, so yeah, I graduated university. Uh, was able to land a job, a good job with Environment Canada, uh, in Ottawa here, um, which I was pretty stoked about to to be honest, yeah. because this was a job that that a lot of people in my in my class were gunning for, and I was able to get it, and um, it was it was a great opportunity at the time, and I did enjoy it. Like it, it's not one of these stories where where, oh, I was stuck in the cubicle, I was stuck in the nine to five and I hated my life, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't love it, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. Right? Like I enjoyed it. It was good work. Um, it was, it was meaningful work too. Like we were, we were tracking all the emissions in Canada. We were putting it in the mm-hmm. national pollutant inventory report that would go out every year. And based off that, that's how you make um, regulations and policies and things, yeah. things like that to make sure that we um, obviously dial in those emissions over time and, and create agreements with other countries and, and things like that. And it was, it was pretty cool work to be honest. So um, I didn't hate it, but definitely didn't love it. <laughs> and my, my passion was in coaching. My passion was going back to earlier in my story, connecting with people, helping them oh. get from A to B, bridge the gap between where they are now, where they want to go. Um, so to be honest, man, I actually started coaching people within the office. I, I started coaching people. Yeah, man. Uh, you make use of your resources. That's yeah. literally one of the best things you could do. Yeah, yeah man. Exactly. Yeah. Different floors. Um, word started getting around that I was doing this and, uh, it's a huge need. It's a huge need in almost all businesses, all corporate life, whatever it is, you're sitting down from nine to five, you're going out for lunch, you're going out for drinks. I mean, health and fitness isn't really a big component in that type of lifestyle per Mm -hmm. se, depending on the person, obviously. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Still like what 1% of people can do real body weight pull up something like that. Is it really? I didn't even know that. It's something maybe it's five pull-ups, but whatever, like regardless five pull-ups, one pull-up, like everyone should be able to. Yeah. True. Yeah, man. That's insane. But yeah, man, that, uh, that's how coaching all started. And I started a blog, started the Instagram and just went, 
went absolutely all in on it, man. Obviously alongside with my job at the time. And, um, it was just a six month contract position, which ended and, uh, had the opportunity to go back and decided to go all in on coaching at the time. And that is awesome. Uh, never look back, man. Yeah. Dude, that's, that's interesting. So you were talking about before it was group think you liked that at the beginning. I mean, that is the comfort element, right? That's what a lot of us have. Dude. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. one of the, the hardest things is realizing now you're probably a lot safer when it comes to things mm. because it's you doing whatever it is versus mm. the group. Cause the group can turn at any time, mm. Mm. but yeah. the group's the easiest place to make personal connections. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah, man. That's yeah, cool. I, agree more. Yeah. I love the, uh, the psychology and uh, sociology of how people's minds work. Sorry. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, it's interesting, man. And I mean, at the time, um, like I, like I went to school for five years to do this specific thing and then yeah. I achieved this specific thing to, to get that particular job. And, uh, for me to walk away from it six months later was definitely a ballsy decision. Um, and my yeah. family and my, and my close circle, my friends are like, good luck. But I mean, like, what are you, are you sure you want to do this? Like, why, why do you want to go all in on this thing? That's risky yeah. and it's not certain. And if you work for the government up here, I don't know what it's like in the States, but, um, but I mean, you're set, like you, yeah. you got a safe job, you got a pension, like everything's basically set for you. Um, you're not like obviously super well off by any means, but I mean, you're, you're comfortable. You're very comfortable. Yeah. You're very safe. You're going to have a good and life. That's, and that's the, the so to leave it. Us. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So for me to leave that in six months, um, was definitely pretty ballsy. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's awesome. I mean, n most people will never want to take this up. Like they, they mm. want to, but they will never actually put their foot down. Mm. The dude it's the mo those are the moments that define people though totally do you do it yeah, do you not do it me. and then you know there's that like weird intuition like you got to do it you got to do it and you're yeah. like i don't know i don't know i don't know and you do it the worst yeah. that happens is well, it's so true you go man. back I mean, to the job yeah exactly yeah exactly that's so true even even when clients are, are contemplating working with me or whatever it may be that's it's the exact same thing just yeah. a different circumstance they're scared to make that jump because it's fear of the unknown it's fear of oh what if i go all in and if i fail what if this yeah. isn't right for me but i mean you ha you have to make that step you have to step outside of your comfort yeah. zone if you want something more if you want something greater than what you have now exactly it's, yeah it's so key dude most fear i was talking about this recently is just so like it is just fear of the unknown. Mm. And like, luckily, a lot of the culture is changing where we're embracing failure. Mm. But it's fear of failure. Yeah. And like, just fail. Just fail a bunch and realize that it doesn't mean anything. And then you're like, oh, cool. I'll just do whatever I want because I can keep failing. It's fine. Yeah. As yeah. long as you learn. Don't be the guy who, what is uh, Einstein's quote? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and yeah. trying to get a different result. Yeah. And I mean, dude, yeah, just to, to build off that, I mean, I don't want it to sound like, oh yeah, I started Chiller Fitness after my corporate job and everything's all sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. Dude, I maxed out two credit cards right away. I, to get this off the ground, I was making no money. I didn't even really know um, how to effectively coach. I knew how to fitness coach, but, yeah. but that's very different from lifestyle coaching. And, and mm -hmm. I, I would argue that's what I do way more. I'm, I'm more of, guy i'm more guiding someone from where they are now i'm meeting them exactly where they are now to become the type of person who's capable of achieving the things they want to achieve mm -hmm. i mean I, i'm not giving them the end result i'm not giving them the fat loss no. i'm not giving them the new mindset i'm just helping them develop into that type of person over time over yeah. 12 weeks over six months because if you do that if you focus on that process you will get the result yeah you will get the result that you're after. And although we, we do do goal setting exercises and, and set whatever end goal at the end of the day, it, it's more about going along the process with clients, going oh. along the journey with clients. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, man, it's, it's definitely not easy, but it's worth it every time. Yeah. Every time. That's, that's, yeah. There's no overnight success. There's mm -hmm. a lot of work that goes into any of it, mm -hmm. but if you're willing to put in the work, you can do it. Yeah, it's like, it's, I mean, I wish I have this notion and this may be just thought, but this is kind of how I see the world. It's if everybody did what they want to do like that, even if they struggle at the beginning, like just take all that away. Mm -hmm. Quality comes out of all that. 
And if quality comes out of all that, then everything is quality because everybody's doing something that is quality driven. Mm. Not to say like, I mean, it could be anything. Like people do like to figure out uh, garbage. People like to figure out whatever it is. It's like, we have a notion that like, oh, then how do these get jo- these jobs get filled? Someone will do them. Like someone wants <laughs> the job. Like that's the truth. That's how it works. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. That's so true, man. I mean, if you, if you want something you never had before, if you want to get somewhere where you've never been before, you're going to have to do something that you've never done before. And I mean, that's uncomfortable. That's uncomfortable it's for a lot of people because you need fair. to, you need to change something. And I, I, I think coaching is very much getting people to, to change their behavior in certain yeah. I think, I mean, health and fitness aside, that's, that's just a byproduct of, of helping someone change their behavior. And it's, it's uncomfortable. It's, it's, it's discomfort. It's, it, there's a bit of pain there, but I mean, if you want to get to that desired result, you want to get to that goal, whatever it may mm-hmm. be, you need to go through that period of changing things, of being uncomfortable a little bit in order to grow into that person. And yeah, uh, yeah I couldn't agree more, man. I love uncomfortability. We were talking about on that live cold showers and I've been doing, so I've been, um, I'm reading this book of all about, uh, Budioko breathing. Mm. Um, and now I'm like super paranoid and like pay attention to always breathing through my nose, blah, blah, blah. I just didn't even do it right there. Um, (laughs) but the, so the Wim Hof like is a lot of, uh, exhalation, um, and hyperventilation and he's kind of like against that in a sense. Like he wants you to get, uh, something called the bolt score up to 40 before that. And basically mm-hmm. it's like breath under, I don't know. Ba- basically you blow, you blow out all your breath and it's how long you can hold your nose. If you're just nose breathing mm-hmm. without having some sudden urge to breathe back in. Mm-hmm. And I've been trying to do that with the cold shower where I like just go in like completely relax, like not even thinking about it. And that is one of those comfortable, uncomfortable challenges. Dude, that's crazy. You're Good like, you. mm. and then <laughs> you make it in and you're like, yeah. oh, that's not bad. And then the cold hits you. That's funny. It's really weird. I used to do cold showers all the time, like years ago. I would say yeah. like two or three years ago. And then I stopped and I stopped like for straight up every single day for 365 yeah. days a year for like two years until until recently, man, until like last month, because I read Aubrey Marx's yep. new book, Own the Day. Have you read that? Yeah, that's kind of why I got back into it. So, oh, is it? Yeah, no, that's that's exactly why I got back into it. And uh, I've literally been like living out his morning routine almost, uh, almost every day. I, I try to at least, and it's uh, it's so true though because it's it's getting out of that, that yeah zone and just it's like that first win of the day and I always try to have water first thing in the morning and, and get yep. some movement in which I, I was doing before but I mean it, it's so true get some sun which you're all about too which I love get I that do. 20 get that 20 get, get that, that 20. 20 and then um oh man learn from the greats it's my new one Ooh, I like that because then I mean I'm always getting 20 while learn, listening to podcasts normally yeah so okay learn from the greats sure, sure. someone you I know. love that man. There you uh, go. There you but go. dude, I that book is fire. You tried the kettlebell workout? No, I haven't. Okay. And but I'm all about kettlebells no. too. When Ash and I drive out west, it. is it? Yeah, okay. When Ash and I drive out west, where I am like straight up going to buy kettlebells from on it, like some of the cool yeah. ones, and uh, we're just going to throw them in the car because we're going to like stay at hotels, we're going to yeah. camp a little bit and stuff like that. So, um, and I'm just going to be doing kettlebell workouts all summer. Dude, I mean, kettlebell and then, so if you're doing, if you go to Venice, I mean, you got the bars and stuff there. Oh, yeah, it's true. my favorite place to work out at. It's really, so Venice? Fun. The energy is great. Yeah. Like, everything's good. I don't really go to the weighted area over on Muscle Beach. Yeah. I like the beach with uh, all the, like, uh, rings and all that stuff. And you have, like, yeah. the crazy person who comes out from nowhere and they're wearing, like, full body suit and they, like, come in and do, like, nine backflips and then they're gone and you're, like. <laughs> no way. <laughs> what just happened yeah that's insane dude, that place is so fun california yet, oh, man. Uh, dude with the um the morning routine yeah getting sunlight that book i love that book i mean yeah, it's just good i mean it's it's good solid information presented in a good way mm-hmm. he writes well too eh? yeah i like i like 
he's actually freaking hilarious yeah <laughs> like his some of his examples and like how he uses his swear words it's like dude you're you're actually hilarious but he is like a poet and like a philosopher too like that's how that's what he went to school for and stuff so yeah like in turn like literature and, and writing and reading like he's that's definitely a strong suit yeah but, uh, that's like, a great read recommended for any of the listeners for sure that is a phenomenal work so this is just like a random one but are you using anything right now that's uh that you like something you're like obsessed with uh like just anything yeah just anything yeah to be honest no not really in, in terms of like specific gadgets yeah. or like supplements or anything like that um not at the moment man i've just been because this is a busy time for me building out my courses and all that stuff i've uh, uh i've just been going all in on that and business and uh reading books and stuff like that but oh, yeah. But yeah, no, in, in terms of like biohacks or anything like that, mm-hmm. no, nothing, uh, nothing really specific right now at the moment, but always open to try new things. Cause I know yeah. you got some stuff you got going on. Let me know about that. Dude, I'm always just trying something random. You got the red it's light fun. therapy, you got oh, everything going in. Eh? That's my favorite. I do red light therapy. Like normally like, so my night routine, you know, I throw on the glasses mm. and I'm one of those guys. And then uh, reading, but I'll do like an hour and a half of just like red light there. It's just sitting there sp- shining on me the whole time. Mm-hmm. You just feel so relaxed and you can use it for so many different uses. So for those listeners who don't know what red light therapy is, tell yeah. them a little bit about it. So um, the way that like mitochondria works, ev- everything has certain frequencies that it's tuned to. So whether mm-hmm. that's colors, that's why blue light's not, that healthy it's where red light is the de-stressing uh mechanism of uh light and so actually i just recently turned my whole phone screen red just to Mm. test that out for a while Mm. Uh, so all my colors are red uh there's no like it's i don't know it's some weird hack um (laughs) but the way that all of our cells are working is they're tuned into certain frequencies of course there's certain nutrients and things like that that work well Cells like 650 to like 850 nanometers wavelength, which is red to infrared light. Yep. The easiest way to help the cells feel de-stressed, but also come into a productive sense where they're making ATP and uh, not in the sense that you're going to be energized. Like a lot of misconception is like, I have more ATP, I'm more energized. It just means that your body has more availability to make the things that you want. So whether mm-hmm. it's healing whether that is energy, whatever it may be, but, or that's just de-stressing your body. Um, it helps the cells get relaxed so they can do that and the mitochondria functions well. So yeah, it's sure. quick. I mean, I have a document, I'll link it and I'll send you it as well, but it's got a thousand studies for red light. Um, it's crazy. It kind of blew my mind. They're like, dude, for this, 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 yeah. this, this. I'm like, what? There you go. Yeah. You should totally make Instagram stories about that, man. That'd be cool to see. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm going to soon. I'm uh, compiling like more what I want to talk about with it. Cause you could talk about like bone regeneration stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I like it for a few certain uses, yeah, no okay. tropic. So hitting yeah. a brainstem and stuff. Mm, um, speaking to that, are you a nootropics guy? Yeah. Oh, I love nootropics. What do you take? I take, I, I used to do alpha brain from on it. You did? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I definitely saw um, increase of focus. I think that was mm-hmm. the biggest thing that the biggest benefit that I got um, in terms of, yeah, I think that like anything else, like I, I don't think I was more productive or any, in any way, or I don't think I was thinking more clearly, but focusing on one particular yeah. task was, was definitely the biggest benefit for me. So I used alpha brain probably five years ago. So whatever the first formula was, Oh, that's that was when, a long time ago. That's when I was, that's using their it. biggest product. Eh? That's, um, yeah. Like that's how on it like made it. I don't know if you know Arby's story, but like that was their no, like yeah. flag that was their flagship product. Really? And he put like yeah, so like he developed it and he only had like twenty grand or something like that. And he he like sold it to the or he had to give it to the factory or developer yeah. or whatever to to get the new shipment. And either he was gonna sell out or or on it was like dead. So Ooh. he put he put all his eggs on Alpha Brain and uh and it hit and it hit. So now he's got like this obviously insane company, Dodo, but yeah. Yeah. So I used to use that. One of my favorite things that I'm using right now is Brain FM. I just, I love Brain FM. Oh, um, dude. It's I, not yeah. necessarily a nootropic, but it is. So like the way it works, um, a neural oscillation. So I, 
going to school for neuroscience. I, I love when I can geek out on this stuff, but yeah. Yeah. you know, when it's raining outside and you get in that, that good, like relaxed mindset, you're like, I could work, have a cup of coffee, do whatever. Yep. Or like when you're at the beach, you have that like transcendent, like good feeling of like, I'm on the sand. There's the water. I look out. That's called neuro oscillation or it's the tuning of neuro oscillations in the brain. And so like, they use artificial intelligence paired with uh, nature sounds and then some music to actually tune you into these different mind states. So you could do focus and like, it's crazy, but in like 10 minutes, you're like zoned on whatever you want. Uh, nap, it brings you into the nap and out of the nap. So it's not like a nootropic, but it's something that's like so easy to use. Brain FN is what you put on your head, right? Uh, no, Brain FM actually is just a, uh, uh, app that you could do and it's just it's just sound so for focus you want to use headphones because it's shorter wavelengths right so if it bounces off the wall it's got to be too long of a wavelength Mm -hmm. a sound wavelength um but like if you're napping or something you don't have to wear it you could just put it in your room because it's supposed to be smaller or longer wavelengths anyways yeah um interesting that's i i do that thing it's my favorite um then the paracetams, I always like to mess with those. Um, I'll microdose psilocybin. Uh, I do like to do that. Um, not often, not right now at least, but uh, once in a while. And then I, I've tried modafinil. I'm not a fan. I no, use it I, for a little bit. Um, right. My favorite is probably, I like Nopept a lot, mm. or Nupept. And I'm, I think that might be in alpha brain i'm not sure but i think so too yeah yeah there's uh yeah i i played with i had a, at one point this uh, uh laundry basket with like 50 powders and i was like we'll just try combinations and see <laughs> that's awesome 300 dollars on powder city later <laughs> there you go oh man that's crazy it was fun though are you using any right now no i'm not actually not right now not right now it's uh yeah i've kind of gone cold turkey off that stuff for now to uh to really see how i respond then yeah go back on next month i'm thinking yeah but but yeah for right now i'm i'm off basically anything the only things i take right now is uh just straight up vitamins like and and things i take are vitamin d c b and then uh supplement with protein when i can but awesome yeah yeah, just the basics right now fish oil sorry but uh, so do you so so you've got a new program coming up you co uh kind of like the partner coaching program uh where you walk people through but it's not uh one-on-one it's still interaction um do you recommend anything like that in there are you going that route or is it more how are you focusing positioning this uh in terms of supplements yeah yeah it's um i'm leaving it pretty open-ended i'm giving recommendations absolutely yeah um because i'm gearing this specifically towards uh, people who work corporate jobs they have busy lifestyles there's definitely a few vitamins and minerals that they're Dude. deficient of yeah um, i mean like getting getting all everything they need in their meals like in terms of micronutrients even macronutrients sometimes depending on what it is for their specific goals there's definitely some some supplements that would help them so i do have a full supplement video and supplement list that i recommend oh, awesome um but i mean what with that being said i mean I'm sure we'll get into this later on with the 80, 20 rule. I mean, supplements are great, but I mean, they're not going to give you the most bang for your buck, so to speak. So so I leave it, I leave it up to them. Um, But yeah, I definitely give some, some recommendations for sure. Awesome. Yeah. We could jump into the 80, 20. Um, I know we recently had that live about it and we, uh, we both did a video. I know you did a video. I did a video about it as well. Um, Your 80, 20 for health is, (laughs) <laughs> dude that's an awesome question um 80 20 for health well for, it's dependent on their goals so let's say let's say exactly the character archetype that you just described okay. uh, someone working a corporate job and they're just they don't know what to do okay if that's if that's the the type of person we're looking at they want to lose weight they want to feel their absolute best so biggest three things that i say they need to focus on it's number one, staying consistent with training, focusing on progressive overload. That's, that's one of the biggest things is make sure that you stay consistent and you're continually getting better over time. Number two 
is hitting your caloric needs. This, I mean, this is just science. Okay. It's, it's the key determinant whether weight is gained or lost. So you need to make sure that you're not fluctuating in a caloric yeah, yeah. deficit and surplus because, I mean, that's how most people, uh, most people cycle and don't get to where they want to go. So make sure that you either stick to either surplus or the deficit, whatever your goals are. And number three, I'm going to throw a little bit of wild card in here, but for that specific subset of yeah. people, um, I think this is one of the most important things that we could talk about this too. It's to de-stress. Yes. It's to de-stress, man. And I mean, the Western lifestyle world that we live in, it's one of the most stressful environments in the world. Honestly, man. I mean, Everything. it's so true, especially if you're a corporate warrior and you're working the nine to five job and you have all, you have a family, you have all this stuff going on. You have work demands, you have taxes, you have kids get to hockey practice, you have your mortgage. I mean, your phone's going off because it's your mom's birthday as well. And like you're late to this meeting. I mean, there's so many external stressors mm -hmm. out there. And especially if, if you're overweight and you're not sleeping well, well, it's it's huge it's, it's huge it's one of those negative feedback loops where it like, is as soon as you're not on top of it it's getting worse it is i know i and know then by it getting worse it's getting worse yeah yeah it's and so you, true dude yeah i mean diving in a strut so 100 percent caloric you said lifting heavy uh progressive overload progressive yeah. overload yeah. uh one of my favorite techniques yeah. I do, I do mostly movement, but when I'm mm. not, uh, like I like to set up two or three progressive overloads, uh, mm. work, uh, exercises within the actual routine. Yeah. But stress today is literally every, that's why the red light's one of my favorite, super easy way to help actually make sure that, you know, stress is going down. But otherwise, I mean, there's so many ways to de-stress but no one right now is really taking time for themselves. I've been doing, so you, in that book, he talks about ecstatic dance. Have you tried that? <laughs> you know what, man, dude, all the time. I listen to Erling. Do you know them? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or him. I don't even know if it's like a group or whatever, but I, dude, I just, I just put them as my podcast intro and outro. That's how much yeah. I love them. And before I hop on lives or like before I do anything like that, I need to get in state. Um, so a hundred percent, I will dance. I will yeah. get in the mood. I will just move with my body, like in no particular way. And it's dude, it's huge. Totally. It. Yeah. I'm about to do, I'm going to do a video soon on like, I tried ecstatic dance for a month. Yeah. Um, Cause I've been doing, he's got a playlist on Spotify. Yeah, it does. The whole birth cycle. Yeah. Dude, it's fire. I, I mean, like for me, that's one of the easiest ways to de-stress, playing an instrument. Yeah, um, sure. Going outside, getting the 20 minutes of sunlight, walking around, spending time with people you love. Like, Yeah. Yeah, you know what, man? Yeah, just to dive into that a little bit deeper, um, I, I have a client and I can 100% guarantee you he's listening to this right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I won't say his name though because he doesn't like to be outed, but... He, he just recently signed up uh, for a new coaching block with me. So, I mean, once the 12 weeks ends, uh, you obviously have an option to renew um, or part ways. And he renewed and uh, we've, we've seen absolute awesome results. He's an awesome guy, but he's exactly that type of client I'm talking about. The one who has all kinds of stuff going on. He works yeah. HR, this corporation, he has young kids, um, obviously a wife. He, like, he's got so much stuff going on and he's working on developing his body and mind with me. And he, we see, we saw absolutely amazing results in the first block. Mm -hmm. And this is our first week in the second block. And it's actually funny because I told him for this week, because he told me, he gave me an update. He said, he's barely sleeping. He yeah. said, he's got all this stress going on. He has some family stuff going on too. Um, and all kinds of other stuff that he's dealing yeah. with. And he's, he's chronically stressed. He was chronically stressed. Yeah. So me as a coach, I mean, I think coaches can, can, get in this loop of saying, Oh, that's okay. Like go harder, go home, or we got to continue to to push against the wall and don't worry. Mm -hmm. Like life is tough. Life will throw stuff at you. You just got to push through blah, blah, blah. I legitimately told him to take the week off. I legitimately told him to watch movies, to, to sleep. I told him to sleep and I said, don't worry about the gym because if you worry about the gym now, it's like throwing spaghetti against the wall. Like nothing's going to stick. You need to, you need to make sure that we de-stress because yeah. weight loss and muscle gain, whatever your goals are, it's virtually impossible if you're chronically stressed. 
It literally is. It, it honestly is. So, I mean, so understanding if you are, like if you're a listener out there and you have a lot of shit going on, mm-hmm. um, make sure that you dial that in first, like before you eat. And if you're in a caloric deficit as well, that's a stressor in and of itself. Yeah. And if you have, if you have all kinds of other stuff going on too, um, that you need to, you need to dial that stuff in, in your life. So, so it's actually funny because I voice memo all my clients, um, uh, like every other day or whatever it may be, depending on the type of client. And I'm, I voice met with him yesterday and he said, man, I had the absolute best day ever. Like he slept <laughs> in, he's feeling good now. That's one of the biggest things, yeah. coaching, right? It's to feel good. Um, he, he worked from home. He, he had a great healthy meal. He went for a walk. He got some sunlight. He yep. watched a movie to himself. Like he, he meditated to himself and then he went and he picked his kids up from school and like he had a great day with his family and yes. he was like, man, you know what? It was the perfect day. Yeah. And it's funny. And it's actually funny because then I responded to that voicemail and I said, you know what, man? It's actually funny because we did like we didn't work out like we didn't work on um, anything in particular, yeah. like any any key deliverables. But with that being said, this was the most important day of our entire coaching relationship because you lived your ideal day. And this is the type of day that I want you to live every day. Yeah, exactly. Every day. 100 percent. And I've, I've been doing a similar type thing where mm-hmm. uh, I'll do it like Saturday, Sundays, whatever, whatever day I'm like completely getting to myself and I'll do like, like 45 minutes to an hour of ecstatic dance, 45 minutes to an hour of meditation, journaling, like all this stuff. It, I mean, you want to talk about taking a load off your mind, let your mind do what it wants to do just for a little bit, like relax, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. stop thinking about like, Oh, in five hours I have this to do or, Oh my God, I got to do it. Like, I know we can all get lost in the tedium of what life is because of course there is so much to do and we only have so much yeah. time. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you have to use the time for anything you don't want to use it for. And mm. if you're, if the time's becoming less valuable to you because of the fact that you have all this stuff to do that you don't even want to do normally, take some time. You need it. Like that's the, I mean, you can hustle and grind yourself down into the ground, but yeah then you're not there. I mean, you're not existent. Yeah. No, dude, I I couldn't agree more. I mean, even with myself, like let's do some introspective uh, review on myself. I mean, yeah, I want to make all these videos on YouTube now. Like I want to, I'm building out this new course. I want to grow on on Instagram. I want to get new clients. I want to make sure I provide as much value as I can. I want to do all this stuff all the time. And I, and I have all these big goals. Like I want to have an HQ one day and have a cool gym and call it mind body evolution and have like, um, have a meditation studio as well. And like all all this stuff that I want to do and I want to do it now. (laughs) So, it's like it's it's something I need to continually check in as well and say, yep. you know what, like yeah, I could like keep working on my business tonight for five hours, but I need to go for a walk with Ash on the beach and like just chill yes. out and grab a drink at the bar and and call my best friend who I haven't talked to in a while and text my dad that I haven't seen in a while and yeah, like, all this little stuff. It's uh, it's necessary and it's oh. it's, it's so Dude, easy so to necessary. yeah, and it's so easy to to fall by the wayside. I think you, I think you need to continually stay conscious of that stuff. Are you big on grounding? Mm, you know what? I, I was, it's something yeah. I got away from recently, but, but yeah, it's huge. Dude, I've been looking into those, you know, they have biomats. Um, mm-hmm. They have this biomat that goes over your bed. So it's basically like a little mattress pad. Yeah. But that's eight hours. You're getting de-stressed the whole night. And I'm like, ah, oh, I might need to get that. It's infrared. It's got infrared in it. It's it goes got over your bed. So it's uh not like over, but it's the like a mattress pad. You know, you have the mattress and then like that little like oh on top. Pump. Yeah, okay. So you're you're lying on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. it's like that. I thought it was like got, above you. Oh no no no! <laughs> it's got it can go from ninety five degrees Fahrenheit. I think thirty to seventy Celsius. Ninety five to like one forty. How much Fahrenheit? Is it? It's pretty expensive. So I'm. Do you have one? Not yet. It's uh, twelve. Okay. It's like twelve hundred bucks or okay. thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. But like, it's got a full amethyst crystal layer for uh, positive ions. Copper layers to pull out because copper's a conductor. Pull out yeah. electrical ions. I'm like, ah oh, man. <laughs> I mean, if like eight That's hours, awesome. like sleep is so important, and people don't oh, realize that when you're sleeping for okay, let's say the average person probably is six hours, just because. Again, we're talking about stress. Everybody yep. lives in a super stressed society. So what's the rule? But for six hours a day, you're doing one thing. If your 
not breathing correctly while you sleep, you're screwed. If you're not de-stressing while you sleep, it's not going to be good. And if you're using sedatives instead of something, like a lot of people think sleep supplements is going to help. It knocks them out, but that's because it's a, sed- a sedative. It mm-hmm. has sedation properties. Alcohol too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, man, I've been, I've been heavily weighing that because I'm like, mm-hmm. well, I do sleep every day. So we'll see. Hey, you know what you should do? You should become like, you should start doing like testing videos, like product review videos. Cause like, yeah. you're, you're kind of like that type of guy. I like it. I would totally be, I would totally yeah. watch that. I would be I, should. <laughs> I'll, uh, I mean, when I do like the red light video and stuff anyways, I yeah. have a few that I like. Um, so like naturally I'm going to fall into that just because yeah. I buy all this stuff cause I need it to try it. Yeah. Uh, I love but it. I'm not there you as go. far as in Greenfield will I get like, uh, stem cells injected into my dick or anything like that <laughs> it's a little bit too far off yeah yeah he did that um, oh my god that's he insane said it, he said it worked so why why would you get stem cells injected into your dick what he was saying is that <laughs> yeah super dick <laughs> yeah he said that it's been like i i watched the joe rogan like, with what's him the reasoning here something. let me know enlighten me it's like you know when you get your shoulder your rotator cuffs bad well yeah. uh rotator cuff it's a, a similar sort of tissue so it's like tissue repair and healing and okay. then like uh the amount of blood flow just increases like crazy so, so you get super boners yeah forever nice. or for however long stem cells last <laughs> I'm like well i won't do that but i'll try all the other things <laughs> Oh man, that's hilarious. But no, yeah, we're turning to stress. I mean, like that's, I think stress is the number one killer and it doesn't matter. Like we hear about sound pollution being bad where it's like people are listening to something too much. The reason it's bad is because it's elevating your stress hormones. Mm. That's for everything that we do. Any of that stuff that is chronically elevating stress hormones, of course, like if your adrenaline's firing constantly, you're always in yeah. fight or flight. Your body doesn't think it's going to live that long, so it uses too much energy yeah, or man. too many resources. Yeah, I, I forgot what study this was, so don't quote me on that and don't mm-hmm. hold me accountable to this. But uh, it's something I saw like two or three years ago. It was showing that people who live like downtown in cities have have like a two to three year shorter lifespan or maybe even more than people it, who live like rurally or even in suburbs because uh like you said of the noise of the light of the constant go 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 yeah. of like the corporate like all this stuff going on it's it's a stressor for sure yeah if you live in a city you gotta work hard you gotta like and make that's sure you have black yeah. outlines you gotta make sure yeah i don't know because like white noise generators don't work that well in a city mm. like I, I use one in my room but it's not as it won't block as much sound as uh four police cars driving by your window at 3 a.m. Yeah. or yeah. like the subway train. Yeah. So that's where it gets hard. Like you might have to noise proof your shit if you really want to like live in a city and live the best way possible. Getting used to the sounds isn't doesn't mean you're sleeping better again. Right. It's like still a stressor. All this. Yeah. Is. yeah. So true. Um. Yeah, man. No, the city, I think it was more than two or three years, if I'm not mistaken. It was something weird. I, it was like... Oh, you know what I'm talking about. You know the study. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I think I think you're right. Yeah, maybe it was like five or something like that. Yeah, it but was... But I remember reading it. I was like, holy shit. That's like, that's a lot. It's one of those that's things that crazy. you would never even think of. You're like, no. yeah, I don't know. It's just a loud noise. And then you die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was talking to gotcha. Ash about this. Yeah, I was talking to Ash about this the other day. I was like, man... Like I, a lot of my friends live in the city, which is cool. Yeah. Like, obviously I love going to the city from time to time, but I have no desire to live yeah. in a city, like, like a city city. Like I yeah. love living by the beach or like living on like a big farm field or whatever it may be. Like I love space. I love yeah. space. It's so, a, it's a yeah. conundrum. I'm a city yeah. person. I love I them, but it's hard. Like I would love Venice area because you get yeah. the beach and stuff right there. Yeah. And you don't have to like drive around as much. But again, it's just like, I don't know. I'm trying to weigh those guys. I'm trying to figure out my next move. After moving to uh, Colorado for a bit, moving to Chicago for a bit, being in Michigan for a bit, I'll just see. I don't know. Wherever life takes me. Where are you at now? I'm in Michigan right now. Yeah. Is it? But that's not like a busy city. No, not at all. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, right. This is like suburbia. Yeah, you're just like outside of Detroit, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, are you just back at home? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so figuring out those next moves. 
I like it, man. Well, dude, yeah. if you go to Venice, that would be dope. Ash and I will come and uh, see yeah. you all the time. <laughs> no joke. <Dude. laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I love that area. I know the area. Yeah, well, so do we. And it's, yeah. dude, it's so nice. I mean, mm-hmm. it's nice, good beaches, good weather, good people. Yeah. Again, like, LA is a little more, I don't know. I'm not as a fan of all the LA culture people. They Me neither. Super- Ash and I didn't even go to LA, man. We didn't even set foot in the city. We it's just did like, all the beach towns. Yeah, it's, I mean, we loved it. LA is like what you think it is. Hollywood's yeah. It's what you think it is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you, if you think it's that way, it's going to be that way. So go somewhere mm-hmm. else. <laughs> sure. Like, yeah. I mean, you can see for yourself, but you know, um, but yeah, man. Yeah. So I, I always ask this question. Um, do you know, so a high leverage skill is something that like you can learn from one thing, one uh, task or action and mm-hmm. apply it to like everywhere. So for instance, pattern recognition, uh, breathing, cause breathing has a play in just about everything, uh, learning to learn stuff like that. Do you think there's any like higher leverage skills, something like that, uh, could be a thinking paradigm, but it's a tool that plays out in most things that you do that have led to more success or just where you are now. Mm-hmm. A hundred percent. I'll say this without hesitating. I don't even know if I'm just making up this word or not, but it's failure avoidance. Fair. Nice. So what yeah. I mean by that is learning from other people's mistakes. Nice. And yes. this is, this is huge. If you can, and I'll be honest, like this, this took me a long ass time to figure out and a long ass time to, to apply, to actually apply to your own life. And I've, I've always been that guy who learns the hard way. And I still do with a lot of things. I've yeah. always needed to make my own mistakes. And, I, and I, I feel like you do depending on the situation. Um, but if you're somebody who is, who is highly acute and aware to, to the mistakes other people in your industry or your family or whatever it is that you're trying to do and trying to accomplish, if you're aware of the mistakes they're making and you take mental note of that and avoid it in your own life or take that experience or that circumstance and apply it to your own life and do the opposite because you already know what doesn't work, that's huge. You're going to reach your goals way faster. So if you're able to learn effectively from someone else's mistakes, um, that'll get you far in life. Dude, I, I agree so much. And funny enough, uh, in the last podcast, he said, um, learning to fail. <laughs> there you go. It's, yeah. The thing is, you're not saying not failing, but you're saying to read other people's. I mean, you won't fail if you realize I'm walking these same exact steps this is what I should, where I shouldn't step in exactly. order to not fail. And well, it's funny. It. Yeah. My, uh, yeah, go. My, uh, Godfather, when I graduated high school, gave me, he wrote, oh, a, no he wrote a poem yeah. for me. And one of it, one part of it, which always has stuck with me was remember anything that you do. Someone probably has done before. Yeah. So ask or look for how they did it. And it was, exactly. it was written something like that in there. And I was like, I love that. Okay. this is like how Dude. i need to think forever yeah because it's the truth that's why coaches are so good that's just yeah. it man i mean failing failing's inevitable i mean you, you are going to fail it's yeah. uh you're going to fail a thousand times like at, at whatever it is that you want to do but i mean if you can if you can learn from someone else's mistakes if you can learn from their journey and just fail 900 times instead of a thousand exactly. it's gonna save you a year it's gonna save you two years or whatever it may be so so I think that's that's a huge high leverage skill that that anybody can apply to their own life. Like honestly, just just model. Like modeling is huge yes. too. Model the success of someone that you want to emulate, somebody that that has achieved what you want to see what they're doing now, but not only that, see what they've done and see what mm-hmm. worked for them. See what more importantly didn't work for them yeah. stay away from that and, uh, and model what's good. Obviously put your own spin on things, put it, whatever it is that you want to achieve. But, um, but yeah, I think learning, learning from yeah. other people's mistakes is, is huge. Awesome, man. Yeah. Um, uh, so much. So what do you question right now? What are you questioning? Uh, a paradigm of thought that I like to always use is to question everything, mm. whether that's the news, whether that's whatever it may be. Is there anything like major that you've been questioning? Like, I don't think it works that way. Something like that. Mm, that's, that's a really good question, man. In, in terms of um, like just overall life and, and how things work and things like that. Life, business, uh, fitness, whatever it may be, just because everybody's questioning everything normally, they just don't want to ever articulate it. 
It's yeah. just a good way of thinking about like, hey, maybe this isn't the truth because it's BS. Yeah, I'm going to give a personal answer here. It's something that I think everybody should apply their own life as yeah. well. Um, yeah, not just like in terms of life or anything broad like that. I, I think you should look introspectively. I think you should look inward and, and question yourself. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. I, I think, man, because, and I'm doing this a lot more too. Like, for example, I'm developing a new, a new product. Um, and this isn't a plug by any means. Um, and I keep asking myself, like I'll, I'll develop all these paragraphs yeah. and all these videos and things like that. And then I keep asking myself, okay, wait, let's come back to center here. Why am I even making this? Mm -hmm. like, who exactly. Am I trying to help here? Why am I trying to help them? Why am I even doing what I'm doing? Why am I even a coach? Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like you have to go back to those questions. You have to go back to, to that center and that ethos of what life is for you. Because yeah. If you don't, I mean, like, just like what we've been talking about for the past hour, you can get so caught up in yep. the stressors and the day to day and everything you got going on, the meetings, the hockey practices, whatever it is. Right. Yeah. But I think you need to question yourself from time to time and, and set a day or, or a routine or whatever it may be. If Sunday's your day or if it, every morning at 5 a.m. is your day, mm -hmm. whatever it is, when you do affirmations or, or some sort of routine or meditation, question yourself, ask yourself, why do I do what I do? Why do I believe in what I believe in? Why do I have the goal yes. that I have? Dude, what exactly does it mean to you? And do that deep work, man, do that deep work. Because if you don't, I, I think you go about life blindly. And I think you the beliefs and the preconceived notions that you have are that of your parents or that of your friends. Yes. And, and you need to do that inner deep work to really have your own spin on life and, and really understand why you're on this earth, really understand why you do what you do and have that purpose, have that vision, have that drive. I think that's where everything stems from, man. Yeah. <laughs> I Dude, got really deep, but <laughs> No, man, I'm putting together a mini course right now. Uh, oh shit. Cool. And it's just a free mini course. I'm dropping yeah, it yeah. next week, but yeah, sweet. Literally the I'll first thing is the why. And I talk about this concept mm. uh, called finding your roots. Mm. and just like a tree i mean if you know where the roots are coming from you know your why like you know why you're thinking things and the roots stem more in more than into like i love why what the why is where it's like why do you want to do things what is like the fundamental belief i like the roots branching off more into but where does that come from mm. where like where can you find that and with the notion that people don't really know this but trees move they move a yeah. lot over time. Roots will take hold at different areas, so they will change. But knowing now is, dude, if you don't know that, of course, and I've been doing the same thing where I, I, I've continually questioned everything I've been doing lately. And I'm like, what is this for? What's the purpose? Where do I go with this? Of course, I'm always, I'm too existential. I probably live in like one of those existential crises. <laughs> I'm like, That's okay, though. That's okay. Right? Yeah. I mean, me, like my day to day, like, cause I have to make Instagram posts a lot cause Instagram yeah. is a huge part of my business. Right. And more times than not, like I, I have to be conscious of, it. I'm like, Hey, wait, like, well, wait, why are you posting this? Like, are you just posting yep. this to post this? Or are you posting this for some sort of meaning? Like what's the message behind this? Why, why are you even posting this? Because if you're just posting this to post it, don't do it. Yeah. Like, what's the point? Like you're Dude, just I did that this morning. putting out noise. Yeah. This yeah. morning I was like, damn it i can't post this one yeah like, no that's just I was it. like ah yeah yeah it's like you go into like uh what people don't see is like all everything that goes into content creation and stuff yeah and then like so often you'll film something and edit it and then be like nope delete i've done that oh it, and it's the worst feeling in the world because you spent fucking like three hours on editing yep. or whatever and you and you know what you just didn't hit and you know it's not gonna hit yeah and and yeah I know. That's I, the, I agree. That's, if we loop back to what we were talking about with uh, that conscious action and how like you were realizing with uh, the environment and stuff, people mm -hmm. who are getting in more, uh, more in shape and you're helping them through coaching, the environment's getting better. It's the same with all this stuff. The more that we like take hold of like, when we don't feel that something's good enough, we all do this. Like no one doesn't do this. Don't put it out. Most of us will put it out. And we'll put it out just because we don't want to redo the work or take the time. But the fact of the matter is like, we have to put that out. I mean, we have to not, we don't have to put it out. We have to go back and redo it mm -hmm. and understand that like, 
the better quality it is, the better impact it's going to make. And that's always right. a paradigm that just holds true. Mm-hmm. Even if 10 people see it, whatever, those 10 people, they got affected in a better way than yeah. if you had like some slob together thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so true, man. I couldn't agree more. Even with some of the stuff that I've been doing recently, people, people who, who watch my fitness videos, I always get like double the amount of views on fitness videos or nutrition videos. And then when I talk about mindset stuff, it literally gets half the amount of engagement. And, but with that being said, it's so much more impactful. And every time I post a mindset Mm -hmm. video, I'll get like 20 DMS about people who are like, Oh, you like, I feel like you were speaking to me. Like, can you elaborate a little bit more? Can you give me a little bit more specific advice? And I love that. And I always will, I'll always connect with these people and I'll send them like videos back and forth and just converse with them versus just posting a squat workout, which is cool. Um, and it gets, it honestly gets triple the amount of views that I would normally get. Um, but it just, just doesn't really resonate with, with the messaging that you hit them with the one too. Mm -hmm. Sure. Give Give them what they want and then show them what they need. That's yeah, I was actually, I wanted to talk about how you see the mindset of someone who is fit versus someone who isn't fit. What's the difference? Oh, I could talk about this forever, man. Uh, I, I love this. Um, so the mindset of, of someone who's fit is this, is, this is huge. So someone who's fit, they have a different internal body image than someone who doesn't. Mm-hmm. And, and here's what I mean by that. Someone who's fit believes that they they value what they put in their body they value their their healthy habits they value their workouts they value what they read what they consume what their environment looks like what they're they're conscious of their healthy thoughts throughout the day versus someone who's not fit and healthy um, they have a poor internal body image they think a certain way where um, where they're holding themselves back, where they're not, they're not reaching their full potential, um, where they don't value what they put in their body. They don't value health and exercise and and their habits and what their external environment looks like. And they're just more or less going through the day to day. And you know what, maybe in in a more case, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying it's different circumstances. I'm just saying it's different lifestyles. Right. Um, and, and I mean that, more times than not, there's a deep seated issue there that, that happened in childhood or with a family or whatever it may be. Um, but I mean, with that being said, I think the biggest difference is, is the internal body image, how mm-hmm. they view themselves out in the world, um, is the key determinant between someone who's fit and someone who's not. Yeah. So it's a weird concept. Cause like, uh, again, back to Alan Watts, just cause I listen to him every night while I stretch, but he has so many of these great concepts. Mm. One of them is, the people who go to church and they praise a saint don't realize that the saint himself isn't practicing that religion because he's a saint. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So the person who's fit is living. They're just fit. Well, the person who isn't fit normally that mindset is how do I get fit? Oh, exactly. That's just it, man. Chasing the egg or I don't, it's the mindset of being there versus Mm. always trying to be there. Hmm. Mm, dude, I couldn't agree more. And I mean, this, this is a perfect segue into one of my main coaching philosophies, which is the trifecta protocol. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just kind of coined this term based off three methodologies that I focus on with all my new clients. And it's, it's aligning your mindset, your habits, and your environment with your goals, with whatever particular outcome it is that you want to achieve. Because I firmly believe that if you, if you truly align your mindset, your habits, and your environment, yes with that goal, you can achieve whatever you want. Yeah. Honestly, what health and fitness, business, whatever it is, if you firmly align, and I mean firmly, your mindset, your habits, your environment, yeah. I've said this three times, with that goal, I, I, you will get there. And that's, that's one of the main things I work with clients because I mean, sure, you can have the absolute best health and fitness program in the world, but if you don't stick to it, if you don't develop those healthy habits, yeah. if you don't believe you can actually achieve it and think those thoughts on a daily basis that are conducive to your goals and tweak your external environment to make mm-hmm. the optimal choice just automatic, then I guarantee you, you're not, you're not going to get there. So, I mean, yeah. that's, that's like the lifestyle part of coaching that I think a lot of quote unquote health and fitness coaches or PTs just don't really get and don't really understand. And that's why their success rate is so low is because yeah. it, it's just go, It's so much more than calories. It's so much more than sets and reps and so much and bench pressing. It's, it's life. It's it is life, life man. Yeah. It is life. I forget who said it, but they're like, 
people always ask what's the best meditation and they're always like the best type of meditation is the one that you'll do. <laughs> it's the truth. Dude, diet too, like anything. Yeah. Workout, it's it's so true. It doesn't matter what it is. If you won't do it, it's not the best because exactly. you're not doing it. Exactly. It's like that subjective reality. I, I'm exactly. huge on multiple on all the realities. Yeah. Oh man, that's awesome. I get ridiculous into that, the quantum physics behind it. But um, oh man, that's a whole other rabbit hole. Yeah. Yeah. Probably probably too much for right now. That's like you gotta like <laughs> build you gotta build in quantum physics. It's not yeah. just like and uh, quantum physics, because everything exists and doesn't exist at the same time. <laughs> yeah, of course. Just moving on to quantum physics here, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll get back Real into quick, it. Real quick, let me pull out <laughs> my blackboard. Yeah. I figured yeah. out how the universe works last night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, man. That's dude, totally. I mean, like, if your mindset isn't right, your habits aren't set up, you can't, you can't get anywhere. Like, you could try, but you're fighting an uphill battle in quicksand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely, man. It's so true. That's a great analogy. I'm going to use that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's just super hard. <laughs> it's a double negative, an uphill battle in quicksand. Fuck, man, yeah. that sucks. Whoever, Although, like, whoever, yeah. The thing is, like, if you're fighting someone and they're running downhill, like, hopefully they're not intentionally running into quicksand. Sure. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Because, like, then now they're just in quicksand. Yeah. So they're oh, like, ah, yeah. oh, we didn't think this one through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No right. one's good. The quicksand wins. Yeah. Oh, man. That's funny. But yeah, it's one of those, I mean, your habits, they make you, they make mm-hmm. or break you. And it's with every, it's micro habits. My favorite are micro habits. Mm. It's just how you approach that. Like that's even like a micro expression. Like how do you respond to someone? Like that is a micro habit we don't normally think about. But if you always respond like with a weird like grimace or something, that person's going to get turned off. And then you're going to be like, why can't I get a job? Why don't people like me? And it's like, cause yeah. you built these weird like, things that now are all tied up in who you are Mm. and while you don't consciously realize them which is the reason that they're there they are affecting you over and over again it's building Mm. out and it spans into this web of like i just said hi and he hates me now everyone doesn't like me yeah yeah dude i I would actually argue that micro habits are are almost bigger and, and more impactful than some of the bigger habits that you might have um especially because those those little decisions those little habits those little um things that happen in everyday life are make up where you are right now make up mm-hmm. who exactly you are where exactly you're at personally financially career wise relationship wise whatever it may be those are little things that compound over each other and yeah. and make who you are today and i mean have i ever told you about uh dale brailsford the british cycling coach yeah 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 the one percent gains yeah 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 man that's huge and i mean um and for the listeners who don't know, the the British cycling coach Dave Brailsford, he Britain was was having a tough time trying to win the Tour de France and and trying to win cycling medals at the Olympics. And he had a new approach. He had a new method methodology to just focus on getting one percent better in different areas in their training, with optimizing their sleep, their pillows, their their tire pressure, their the aerodynamics of their helmet, just by one percent. That's it in all these key areas and he focused on that for i think it was a full year and they ended up winning the tour de france and they ended up winning most of the cycling medals in the 2012 summer olympics and this isn't just that that one scenario pat riley the coach of the la lakers at the time yeah. in, in 87 88 um i believe they had they had an all-star team they had uh, michael john or yeah Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson. Um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, like all these studs. Um, but at that time, this was early on, at that time they weren't winning and they were picked to win every year, but they'd always lose in the conference finals. And Pat Riley developed this plan, which is the exact same as Dale, Dale or Dave Brailsford, um, to, to optimize these little habits just by 1% and practice and their shooting and their rebounding, whatever it may be. And they won back-to-back championships in 87 and 88. So, I mean, this works, this works. And this is the power of those little habits that you were just talking about. This is the power of just building on those 1% gains. Yep. Because, I mean, especially in health and fitness and everything that we're trying to achieve, we're always looking for that home run. We're always looking for that huge transformation, that 100-pound loss, that, mm-hmm. that million-dollar business, that gold medal, the championship, whatever it may be. But those things aren't won or lost or achieved in and of themselves it's those little things it's those little things that you need to optimize in order to get there and there's the i mean there's the 
intention, right? You could get there. You could get to the million dollar. You could get shredded. You could have all that stuff. But if you didn't build up those habits and you did it and you had that like overnight success, it's quickly lost. Like it's not sustainable. And like, it's, it's the hardest to explain to someone a lot of times and put that into context. Like everybody wants to win the lottery, but no one is ready to win the lottery. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And it's with everything. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. If you don't build up the foundation, why should the building stand? Mm. It won't. So that's a great analogy, man. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, I mean, it's, it's very hard sometimes to talk to someone and to portray that mindset of like, listen, you have time. You have so much, you have all the time in the world, build up the skills, get there and it will happen, but don't wish it to happen. Cause it won't. <laughs> Yeah. Like you can't, you know, you could try, you could play, you could flick pennies in all the fountains you walk by. But even if it happens, you're going to be like, where did that hundred million dollars of one from the lottery go? Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, man. I, th- I think that's where the disconnect is in the law of attraction. Um, yeah. That it, it's a principle that I believe in um, kind of in theory, but I think it's missing the key component of what you just said of yeah. putting in that work of building that foundation of, yeah. of really making sure that, that you set up the circumstances and, and the environment to win to yeah. achieve that thing. And then, and then law of attraction and positive thinking, all that stuff does come in. Yeah. Um, but just like you said, I, I think just wishing for something to happen, it's uh it's a fool's errand. (laughs) Yeah. The thing, so I've, I, I love, um, the idea of the law of attraction. I've studied Mm -hmm, that quite a bit. Um, the hardest part is basically the way that you were saying it is these small habits. So everything's energy, right? Thought is energy. That's the point of law of attraction. Yep. You have to put energy into something to do it. You could wishing is coming from lack. So if you're coming from lack, you don't even have the energy to put into it. Right. That's where like people are like, I'm gonna use the law of attraction to get X. Well, no, because you just came from the point of not having, you're thinking that way, and you're not adjusting anything to be ready for it. But then you hear fake it till you make it. If you set everything up that way and you act like you're the CEO of a company and you not like the weird guy who like wears a suit around and he's like, I'm the CEO, like but the guy who's like, I built up all the habits to be the CEO. You might actually become a CEO of a company pretty easily because mm-hmm. everything was ready that it just fell into place. Mm-hmm. I had this concept called falling into success I used to like to talk about. Mm-hmm. And that was once you build all the habits, you build everything, you're, never, you're not moving up the mountain. You're not charging anymore. You just fall into place. Mm. And so that's kind of like the way that I try to approach things. That If you're ready, you just fall into it. Mm. I love that, man. Yeah, that's so true. But until that point, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's just going back to what I was saying earlier. That's, that's exactly like my core methodology in terms of coaching. Yeah. Like we're, we're not just trying to get you to achieve this particular goal. We're developing you into the type of person who can achieve it. Like that's mm-hmm. number one. The goal is not number one. Number one is developing your character, developing you into the type of person who can actually achieve the things you want to achieve. Because then just like you said, then it yeah. will happen. Then it will fall into place and, and it'll just flow from there. Yeah. Then it's easy. If you want to be a great coder, you got to learn to code. Yeah. You can't yeah. law of attract that. Yeah, I know. I just know how to code. No, but you yeah. could attract coaches and stuff once you start to actually do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? So Mm -hmm. with anything, yeah, man, that's what I love that concept. I love the concept. I mean, the positive thinking and everything is, you know, I just filmed a video on the reticular activating system. Oh, dude, I can Um, go all day on that too. So it's, it's all the same. I mean, I talk about that all the time. It all comes into the same thing, but it's like, Mm -hmm. look for it, Mm -hmm. put your actions and intentions towards it and it comes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, one of my favorite ways to just understand the law of attraction. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. To the, for, to the people, to the examples I like to use for that are 
if you're looking for a car, if you're looking to buy a car, yeah. it's something it's something that's at top of mind and you, you don't think you see it. But then when you start researching it, when you start yep. looking at pictures of it, you see it on the road everywhere mm-hmm. and it's it's crazy. And, but I mean, it goes both ways. I mean, um, even if it's something you don't want to focus on, like for example, let's say someone's listening and, and they don't want to be fat anymore. Yeah. Well, if you're, if you're focusing on that, if you're focusing on the lack, you're, gonna, you're just going to get more of that. Yep. You're going to get more fat. You're going to get more of that lack. I mean, an example of this is, is me saying, this i want for all the listeners listening right now i don't want you i don't want you to focus on a pink elephant yeah don't yeah. picture a pink elephant yep what exactly are you doing you're exactly. picturing a pink elephant you're gonna get what you focus on you get what you think about so don't think about the things you don't want don't think yep. about how you're sick of feeling fat you're sick of being overweight and being poor or whatever it may be focus on what you do want focus on what you do want to achieve yep. um and over time if you put in the work it can happen Dude, that's why I, uh, one of my biggest uh, ways to avoid the negative moods. So I try to get people off of looking at the news. Mm. Looking at the news is literally, normally, a way to train your reticular activating system to find what is wrong in everything that you do in the world around you. Dude, like, wow. Other- I've never thought of it like that, but that's so true. I mean, I know how the headlines work, running Jeez. ads for as long yeah. as I did. Yeah, yeah. The 70 characters that you get, you got to make it the most click-worthy thing. It's always negative. What you read will always be negative. It's always someone doing something bad. Start your day off with that every single morning and realize that the rest of your day is set up to look for what's wrong with the world. Wow, man. You just blew my mind That is because that's so yeah. true. Yeah. And, oh that, and people who chronically are reading the news in the morning, the moment you talk to them, what do they say? Dude, did you hear about how bad X is? Or like, did you yeah. see what happened? Yeah. yesterday i'm like no because i don't i'm trying to create the best reality and like in, help the world in the best way possible looking at the negative always is going to be bad of course you got to understand on uh, the spectrums and what's going on in the world but to pave the way for new goodness mm. that's my new pave the way to new goodness <laughs> uh, new tagline TM. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta it. you gotta avoid that stuff like the mental yeah. that's mental clutter Clean Big the time. closet of the mind. Yeah. Big time. I love that. I know, man. Like I talk about it all the time. I mean, we're taught to brush our teeth every day. We're taught to floss. We're taught to like eat healthy, all that stuff. But what about flossing your mind? What about brushing yeah. your mind? What about eating healthy for your Dude, mind? I saw that earlier, that video you did. And yeah, it's a hundred percent. I mean, uh, tending the mind is a garden. Like, if yeah, you don't think about your thoughts and you don't like I used, I like to use the term demons. We all have demons. Mm -hmm. Everybody does, but you got to face your demons, face Mm -hmm. them. And you realize like uh, the whole thing is like, you're scared of the dark until you put the lights on that area. And then it's, you know, Mm. use the flashlight in your brain, find the demon, realize it's just darkness. And then it's now it's light. It's lit up. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, that's something we all need to do. That's the whole, we're going to loop back, but that is the questioning yourself. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's so true. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. To bring it all full circle. Yeah. Totally, man. But yeah. Yeah, man. Well, this was awesome. Um, We definitely should do another one soon. Yeah, man. Let's do it. Jam on whatever you want to talk about, man. I got, I, I'm a full blown talker when it comes to all this stuff. And when I'm not reading or trying to edit a video that i don't have to delete you know (laughs) yeah i'm always a talker um there you go man that's funny awesome yeah man well uh i'll ask you the last question that i ask on my podcast all the time i'm sure you probably know it but speaking of the news if there was a billboard that could say anything and people who drove past it would all look at it Mm -hmm. and they would live their day according to what that billboard said what would it say and why Hmm. you know i'm gonna say the first thing that came to mind and then something smarter do it bananas because (laughs) i think it would get people to stop they might laugh a little bit but it has to be like you have to have a good design because if it's not a good design (laughs) then it's just like designs everything then people think i'm a dull salesman and i'm like yeah that's not bananas no (laughs) to bring people back into the present yeah just want you to question things (laughs) just was, uh, question the universe yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that's, that's probably the best holographic. <laughs> or 
what's your why? Yeah, man, that's a big one. I think that's huge. It's very hard to convey real quick. Mm, so mm. like if you say that most people won't understand because you're not using why and that nor like how English works. Every time I type it, Grammarly is like, you typed it wrong. Why is not a noun? And I'm like, it is the way I'm using it. <laughs> but yeah. I think the more that we can get people to think about that, literally the better everything come becomes. Like there's no way around that. Yeah. Yeah. So true, man. So and bananas. True. Yeah. Yeah. Bananas. Bananas. What's your why? That's like the back after they turn to look for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> that's awesome man well uh well yeah this was dope man i appreciate time this was this was awesome man awesome dude um yeah yeah, before we sign off here man where can where can the followers find you i am uh at heightened living on instagram on twitch which i don't use that much anymore but i was trying it for a while which is like that video game platform it's pretty fun Uh, (laughs) facebook website heightenedliving.com and uh yeah i'm on all those normally all that's those. awesome man youtube also yeah um, are you on youtube eh yeah yeah right. i've been doing a lot of youtube i try to do five a week right now there you go that's uh, awesome good for you so that's you know it's fun you get longer drawn out content but you can also add animations and stuff yeah um so on the same sense will where can we find you yeah, man. Um, Instagram is my most active platform. So you can find me at Schiller.fitness. Um, and I, I reach out and uh, engage with everyone there. Um, or you can reach me on Facebook at Schiller Fitness uh, or email if you just want to talk. Uh, will at SchillerFitness.com. Awesome. Yeah, man. Awesome. There you man. go. Well, um, I'm going to have to make the drive over there soon or when you come over here, we'll do the yeah. next one live. Yeah. We'll definitely make that happen, man. Cause you're only three hours away. So we'll, yeah. uh, this is awesome. So yeah, man, we'll, uh, we'll hundred percent link something up soon for sure. Awesome. Cool dude. Sure, man. We'll talk soon. All right, man. Take care.